I'm in the process of upgrading my 2011 Forerunner to the 2014 Plus post facelift uh, interior. I've already done the exterior, but uh, one of the major hurdles that I've run into is transferring the mileage from this old cluster over to a new one. Uh, there's online services that can do this, but they're kind of pricey and you need to pay for two-way shipping and all that. I just didn't want to deal with the hassle. So I busted this thing apart and I figured out how Toyota stores all the mileage on these. And I'm going to explain how to transfer that from an old cluster to a new cluster. Now, before we get into how all this actually works and I explain the process, I just want to say that deliberately misrepresenting the mileage of a vehicle is a felony. And for that reason, I'm not going to explain how to change this mileage to a certain number. I'm just going to show you how to transfer your old mileage to a new odometer. If you're doing this and you have a, a cluster where the EEPROM is broken or something like that and you're unable to read the existing mileage, let me know. I can tell you what information you need to enter, but I just don't want to explain this process and get into any legal gray area. This process will work for any 2010 through 2019 Forerunner, and I'm sure it'll work for a wide range of vehicles outside of that, but I'm not 100% on that, so I'm just gonna say for the scope of this video, we're covering the 2010 through 2019 Forerunners. Also, before we begin, just know that this process is pretty in-depth. We're gonna have to disassemble parts of this cluster. We're gonna have to do some custom wiring to make a harness for an EEPROM programmer, and there's gonna be some software in there. Uh, there is a pretty high risk of damaging your cluster, so I'm not responsible for any of that. Uh, if you guys aren't tech savvy or don't feel comfortable doing this, definitely don't attempt it. There's a reason those services exist. This can be done if you know what you're doing for about a $15 investment um, and a little bit of your time, but there is a pretty high chance of messing this process up. So just watch this video in its entirety and then decide if this is something that you want to do. All right, before we begin, there's a couple things that you're going to need. In order to remove the cluster from the vehicle, you're going to need a panel tool and a 10 millimeter ratchet. Uh, I have one with an extension and this worked pretty good. It's a really simple process, not too bad. And then for the programming itself, you're gonna need a Windows computer or a virtual machine. I highly recommend a virtual machine because the drivers that we need for this programmer are kind of sketchy. Uh, and then you're gonna to need to grab <clears throat> one of these CH341A EEPROM programmers off Amazon. Uh, I'm not gonna link any in particular. They're all pretty much the same and you can get these for about 10 to 15 bucks. You're also gonna need some female to female uh, breadboard jumper wires just to make some modifications because these aren't made to program the EEPROMs that are on these clusters. So we're gonna have to do just a little bit of wiring to get them to talk properly. All right, so here we are in my Forerunner and I just wanted to show you that my meter currently shows 175,508 miles. So we're gonna remove this and we're gonna see what the new meter is currently reading. All right, so remove the old cluster. The first thing that we're gonna do is take this trim piece off by the HVAC, and I find it's easiest. You can even do this one-handed, but the first time it might be a little bit tough. Um, so I'm just gonna grab down here and pull it off. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do just to make our lives a little bit easier is we're gonna move the steering wheel all the way down and back and then lock it in so it doesn't move. And now we need to remove the trim pieces on the right and left-hand side. So the one on the right might be a little bit tricky. It's gonna be weird to do this with the camera, um, but you essentially just pull this out. There's just some clips back in here and uh, with enough force, it will just pop straight out. And this next one's easiest if you just reach in from right by the steering wheel and give it a hard pull from inside there. All right, the very last thing is the bezel around the instrument cluster itself. I find the easiest way to get this off is to just pull from these little tabs on the uh, right-hand side and the left-hand side here. You'll kind of pull up, but there's clips all the way around, so it'll need to kind of come straight out. Right down here, there is uh, just a little, where this like leather piece meets the steering wheel. We're gonna grab our pry tool and uh, just wedge it in either on the right or left hand side here and you can just pop it up and then you should be able to pop it out just straight up there now it should be free all right the last thing holding this instrument cluster in are four 10 millimeter bolts there's uh, one on the bottom right there bottom left and then uh, there's some up on top as well that you can't see so i'm just going to take those out and the cluster should be able to come straight out all right, once you have the bolts out around the cluster, there's just the 40-pin uh, connector back here. So you're just going to want to uh, reach back there. Um, there's a tab on the backhand side, and you can just uh, push on that, and it should just pop out. And then you can pull the instrument cluster up in between the steering wheel and the dash, and it's free. All right, I just plugged in the new cluster so we can go ahead and see 
that it currently has 56,349 miles. All right, we're gonna break down the old cluster just a little bit to get access to the EEPROM. So we're gonna flip it over. And then there's just a number of Phillips head screws all the way around this back cover that we're gonna remove. Once those are out, I'm just gonna use a small screwdriver, but you should probably use like a plastic tool or something. There's a bunch of plastic clips all the way around. This should be pretty self-explanatory. Just take your time, uh, don't pry on them too hard. I've had this cluster apart a couple times, so it might come a little bit easier. Um, some of these can get kind of funky how they open up. So uh, yeah, just be creative, take your time, uh, try not to crack any plastic uh, when it's coming out and uh, shouldn't come apart too difficult. All right, so now that we have the uh, back cover off of the cluster, what we're looking for is U6. It's an eight pin EEPROM and it says 93A66 on it. There may be some other letters, don't worry about that. Uh, in my case, it is right down here. Here's a closer look at that chip. You can see it's labeled U6. You're probably not gonna be able to make out the numbers and letters on the chip uh, through the video, but uh, this is the 93A66 chip. This is the EEPROM where the mileage is stored in the vehicle. Now on my 2011 cluster, some of this blue uh, coating, I don't think it's a conformal coating. I don't really know what it's for. I don't know if it's a tamper seal or what, or just to guard against moisture. Um, but some of that was around this chip and I had to strip it off. I thought about scraping it, but I didn't want to ruin the traces on the circuit board or risk damaging any other components. So what I ended up doing is just using some mass airflow sensor cleaner and I just made a little puddle on there and let it soak for a bit. And then I was able to kind of slowly pick away at and chip up that coating and it just kind of peeled away from the chip. I think this is the best way to do it because it uh, risks the least amount of damage to the board itself. So you're gonna to wanna to use some of that. You could probably also use like carb spray, brake clean, just something like that, that is gonna get in there and kind of soften this uh, this coating up. So once that's away, we now have access to this chip and we can head over to the EEPROM programmer and kind of make the necessary modifications to be able to interface with this chip specifically. So your CH341A is gonna come with uh, quite a few parts. The only thing that we're really interested in is the EEPROM programmer itself. Um, this little clip-on connector, this, and this with all the pins coming out. We don't care about any of these drop-in sockets or other circuit boards. <clears throat> the first thing that I'm gonna do is hook the clip-on programmer to this little circuit board, and this is just gonna give us a little bit of an easier platform to do this conversion with, just because all the pins are labeled. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna stick this circuit board into the ZIF connector on the EEPROM programmer. The way this is laid out, the left-hand side is for 25 series EEPROMs and the right-hand side is for 24 series EEPROMs. We're gonna be using the left-hand side and uh, up at the top left of this, first of all, you're gonna to wanna to click this lever up if it's not already. So it was basically split in half right here. So this top left is pin one. So we're going to take uh, this little board right here and uh, you can see that pin one is up at the, uh, the top left there. So we're just gonna insert that into the uh, socket uh, like so, make sure the right pins are going where they should be and then you can just uh, lock it down. So here I have kind of the pinout of the uh, 93 series EEPROM and uh, how it's set. Now, um, one thing that will come up later is that we're gonna be using programming settings for a 93C66 EEPROM. The only difference between these is the A66 series EEPROM are selectable between eight and 16 bit. And that's what this org pin does. Uh, however, if you program this with the chip still on the circuit board, basically all this org pin does is if it's pulled high, it's 16 bit. Uh, if it's pulled to ground, it's 8-bit. And uh, on the circuit board itself, there is already a connection on this org pin to VCC. So it's already pulled high, it's already 16-bit logic. So we don't need to worry about that pin. And then uh, pin number seven is a no connection anyway. So you can see that reflected down here. This is the, uh, the, the inner board here is the circuit board that's hooked up to the clip uh, connector. And then this is the pin that it needs to go to on the EEPROM programmer board itself. So I'm gonna just use um, some of these breadboard type wires. They're, they're just a female to female. Uh, and I'm gonna make the connections between this uh, clip and the programmer itself. 
All right, so once you're done, you're gonna to wanna to go through and just double check all the connections, but you should have something that looks relatively like this. This is kind of our completed harness for programming this. Now that we have our harness made, we can go ahead and plug our EEPROM programmer into our computer. You should see a red light go on. And lastly, we can go ahead and connect the uh, clip from the EEPROM programmer up to U6. What we're looking for is there should be a dot on the chip in one of the corners. And in my case, there's also a dot on the printed circuit board right here. That indicates pin one, and that should match up with the red wire on the EEPROM programmer. So in this case, I'm gonna to need to turn it kind of upside down from how it would normally be and make sure that the red lead is on pin one. And then we're just going to kind of clip this around the chip. And it should hold on its own. All right, so now that we've got the EEPROM programmer all hooked up to the instrument cluster and plugged into our computer, uh, you're going to need to go download the drivers. We're going to head to our web browser. I've got links for these in the description, um, but we're going to grab uh, this from the software's link. Now, this one, uh, Firefox and, well, pretty much every browser is probably going to complain that it is a uh, it has a virus. So we're going to need to just bypass that. Again, not great. Try to do this in a VM if you can. And then we're also gonna to need to grab the latest copy, uh, or in my case, if you wanna follow the guide, I'll be using 2.1.2 of AS Programmer. Uh, this is the software that will allow us to actually flash and edit the bin files on these chips. So we're gonna say allow download, and you may get uh, Explorer being angry. So now we're gonna to head to our downloads folder, and I'm just gonna right click, and I'm gonna use 7-zip and just extract these all right now. Same thing with AS Programmer. Now, you're probably going to get a Windows Defender alert as soon as you do the one with the drivers. So go ahead and click it, and then just say Allow. Now, to install the drivers, we're going to search for Device Manager, and you should see this USB UART LPT. So we're gonna right-click, Update Driver, Browse, uh, and then you're gonna go to your Downloads folder and the CH341A software's main. Click there, click Next, it should do its thing, and that's it. Now it's time to actually read the chip, so we're gonna go ahead and open up AS Programmer. Um, the first thing we need to do is go to Hardware and make sure we select CH341A. Then we're gonna go to IC, Microwire, Microchip, and select the 93C66. Remember, even though the C doesn't match, that just um, is telling it that it's 16-bit signaling and we should see Microwire 16-bit. So now we're just gonna hit this read IC button in the top right, and uh, here it is. This is the contents of the chip right here. If you have a bad read, if the clip isn't on all the way or you wired something incorrectly, uh, this will just all be F, so it'll be full of F, 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 all that stuff. So the first thing that we wanna do is save this as the original file. We can just keep it in downloads. And I'm just gonna say this is the 2011 cluster. Um, original and uh, what did this have? 175508, I'll just put the mileage in there as well. And go ahead and click save. All right, so now that we have that saved, uh, we're gonna go ahead and break down the new instrument cluster to gain access to its U6 EEPROM chip. And then we can go ahead and transfer the mileage portion over. All right, so I went ahead and took the back off the new instrument cluster the exact same way I did the old one. Uh, here is U6, and you can see that this dot is down in the bottom left corner. So I'm gonna grab my programmer tool again, and uh, we're just going to clip this on right like that, and then head back to the computer. All right, now that we have the EEPROM programmer hooked up to our new instrument cluster, uh, we're gonna click read IC, you'll see some things change. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna save uh, just an original file, that way we have something to fall back on. So I'm gonna call this 2018 cluster, um, original, and I, I don't remember if this had like 100, or sorry, 56,000. So we'll go ahead and click save. Now we've got a clean starting point. Now we're gonna copy the mileage itself over. I like to use an online tool called Hexworks. Uh, it's just a, a decent hex editor. So we're gonna go ahead and click open and I'm gonna grab the 2011 cluster file and then I'm gonna open the 2018 cluster file. Now the mileage is stored in uh, these first few rows here all the way down to uh, 80AF. 
you're gonna see a bunch of repeating numbers or characters up here. And then these down here are gonna be either zeros or Fs. That's completely normal. It's fine if it doesn't look totally like mine. But just make sure you select um, row zero, column zero, all the way down to row 40, uh, column uh, eight, I guess, or four, depending on how you look at this. And uh, make sure this is the 2011 cluster one. We're just gonna select that, hit Control C, and we got copy that to clipboard. We're gonna go to 2018, and we're gonna hit Control V, and just make sure that all this looks good. We didn't go past the the 80 AF. So uh, now our updated file, we're just gonna hit Save. I'm gonna open that up in here, and then I'm gonna just rename this because this is now not original. This is a modded file and it has 175.508 on it. All right, so now we can head back to AS Programmer. I'm gonna open up our modified file with 175,000 miles on it. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and erase IC. Yes, we have to do this before flashing. It happens instantaneously. And then we're gonna hit Program IC. Yes, we'll wait for this progress bar. Again, it doesn't take very long. And then I just like to uh, hit read IC again, just to make sure that everything reads back okay. And uh, it does, it looks like nothing changed when we hit read. So this EEPROM is now programmed and it should have the mileage from our old instrument cluster now in the new one. We're gonna go plug it into the vehicle and check. All right, so now we're back at the vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the instrument cluster on. And you can see that we're now at 175,508, which matches what we had before. Now you're gonna get this maintenance required uh, indication almost certainly because in our case we added 120,000 miles to the odometer. The way you reset that is you click the uh, button on the instrument cluster to go to trip A. You hold the button down, turn the vehicle off, turn the key back on, and then keep holding it down. You'll see this progress bar. And then once that goes away, you can release the button and now it's reset and you should be good to go.